بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وتم التسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين We've arrived at the second juz of the Quran and in the second juz of the Quran we, are, we begin to see the connection between the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam in the first juz if we recall correctly, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Mecca a place that is safe, to make a Mecca a place that is secure, to make Mecca a place where people can unite to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised him and, and, and gave him the privilege of having a musalla within that house, or having a musalla within that sacred ground. And that musalla was the place where he stood to build the Kaaba. And so as we go into the second juz, one of the things that we want to do is continue to connect all the ayat and all the surahs together to see the overarching theme. The overarching theme, one of the themes that we find between uh, the first juz and the second juz is that the first juz talks about history, in particular, the history of the Jews and ending with the history of Sayyidina Ibrahim, whereas in the second juz we'll find the laws that are given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, what's the connection between the laws that are given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the legacy of Sayyidina Ibrahim? That connection is that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the answer to Sayyidina Ibrahim's du'a. He's the answer to the du'a of Ibrahim. He is the one who 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 who, who, who Prophet Ibrahim alaihi salam he when he asked Allah subhanahu wa taala, he says, "Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim." Oh, oh, my Lord, or oh, our Lord, uh, send from among them a messenger. This is the messenger, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and so he 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 is brought forth. Now, in this book, in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala continues to show us not just that answer to the du'a, but the other answers as well. One of those answers is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa taala made the Kaaba the Qibla. Where, where, as before, the believers used to pray towards the Quds, and that's not the building that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam initially built. He built the Kaaba with uh, Sayyidina Ismail, and that was the first masjid that was built. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he had a longing for that masjid. That was the first that masjid that was that was built. That is the superior ground. That's the superior sacred ground that uh, that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam built upon. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answers that dua. And he also gives us rules and regulations as to how that qibla should be, uh, how, how we should direct ourselves to that qibla. Another connection that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes in the second juz, to the first juz, is the sustenance. Where Ibrahim alayhi salam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ He asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring sustenance to the people uh, of of Mecca. Now, what comes with sustenance? Sustenance uh, comes with a responsibility, and that responsibility is to make sure that you are uh, eating the halal and staying away from the things that are that are harmful, which is haram. And so, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also gives us the rules and regulations with regard to meats, particularly because all um, all plants, all plants are, that obviously the ones that aren't per poisonous, all the plants, all the vegetation is halal to eat, but the, the, the animals have a higher level of life, and therefore there, there are certain rules and regulations that we have to maintain in order to take a life of an animal. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the rules and regulations that comes with all this sustenance that was the answer to the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim. He also gives us the rules and regulations with regard to interactions and interpersonal relations and, and justice, upholding justice. Why is that important and how is that connected to the dua of Ibrahim? Well, when we look at the dua of Ibrahim, he says, Rabbana wa ba'ath fihim rasulam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitab. And this messenger will teach them the book, wal hikmah and wisdom, wa yuzakihim, and purify them. <clears throat> this purification 
is done through the laws of uh, upholding justice. So for example, if someone commits murder, how can they be, uh, how can the society be purified of that crime? How can the person find repentance from that crime? The, the repentance and the purity that, or the, the cleansing that has to take place in order for, for that uh, sin to be redeemed is called justice, restoring justice, restoring balance, restoring harmony in society. That has to be done with wisdom. That wisdom is the, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that book is the Quran. And so Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala answers the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim by sending the messenger with the wisdom and with the book and in order to uphold justice and purify the people. Another way that, uh, that people are purified really are through all the other four um, pillars of Islam. We have the first pillar, obviously, which is the Shahadatain, but we also have the other four pillars. We have the Salat. So we talked about the Salat through uh, the Qibla. So that was answered already through the Qibla. Another form of purification is Zakat or charity. And so you'll find in these ayat, in, in, juz, in the second juz, there are ayat about charity and about giving. Um, another uh, group of ayat that we ayat that will that you'll find in the in the Quran uh, about the fa uh, particularly in the second Jews have to do with the fast, and this is another way that we purify ourselves through the fast of Ramadan. And so the rules and regulations about fasting and about Ramadan are also in this Jews. We also find uh, how to maintain and regulate our time in order to worship and in order to stay accurate in our worship and worship him, worship him with with regard to our time and worship him with regard to our uh, uh, wealth and charity and, and, and these things. And all of these things have to be managed by time. And that's part of the wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us about that, teaches, about, to, teaches us about the crescent and how we're supposed to maintain our time uh, by following, uh, maintain our spiritual time by following uh, the, the crescent cycles. Also, we're given um, another form, form of purification through the Hajj. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he, this is another answer uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam when, uh, when he tells Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to call the Adhan. And this is later on in Surah Al-Hajj. But this is all happening during the same time period where the Prophet uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam is building the Kaaba. And so he calls the, the call to Hajj and people are supposed to come. So what happens when people come to the Hajj? People get purified. But in order to make Hajj, Hajj has to be done properly and so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was also sent to pu help pure help people purify themselves through the hajj and um, also the uh, one of the other elements that people uh, uh purify themselves in terms of purifying themselves from the fitna of oppression and so people uh, people who are oppressed how are they supposed to conduct themselves how are they supposed to defend themselves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the answer to, to those questions. Um, so we have uh, zakat, we have charity, as we mentioned. We have um, uh, even inheritance is how inheritance is divided. All of these things are the wisdom, the collective wisdom that is given through the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in the guidance of the Quran. And so we have uh, things like zakat, as we mentioned, or, or charity. We have um, regulations on inheritance we have regulations on uh eating we have regulations on uh, ramadan we have regulations on the hajj and as i mentioned these are the other these are the main four not not this particular list but within that list we have the main the four main pillars of islam we have the salat we have the zakat we have the fasting and we have the hajj but on top of that we also have the management of time which is required in order to do these things. We also have uh, the regulation on food so that our, our worship is accepted. If we're eating properly, we're eating uh, halal, then our worship will be accepted. We also have the regulations, as we mentioned, with regard to killing and fighting or self-defense. And this, again, in order to maintain the four pillars, we have to live in a safe environment and that safety has to be regulated in a certain way. So all of this wisdom is all packaged in to the second juz. And so, um, and with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger, being sent as a messenger, that in and of itself, uh, as we mentioned, is 
an answer to the dua. Um, so what kind of messages has he given us? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answers that question with regard to uh, the questions that people have had to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the answers to those questions. And he literally says, uh, yes, alunaka, or yes, alunaka, they ask you, or they ask you about this, or they ask you about that. There are a number of questions, I believe there are 11 or 12 questions that are given to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to answer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him those answers. And so he's a direct messenger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's passing on all the messages that are given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for example, they asked about what, what should we give in, in charity, not just what should we give, but to whom should we give. Uh, they asked about the permissibility of fighting. Again, these are things that we were we were just talking about, uh, fighting during these sacred months, um, uh, particularly under religious persecution, the permissibility of gambling and alcohol. Again, this has to do with purifying people from the, the, the illnesses and the filth of sin. How to, uh, what, what's the permissibility of these things? How to care for the orphan. Again, this establishes security uh, and, and sustenance for the people uh, that, uh, that Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua for. And the, even the laws of menstruation, even the laws of menstruation with regard to how, men, how a woman uh, should conduct herself with regard to uh, salat and with regard to uh, her married life when she is in that situation how uh, how how we purify ourselves from that and then even from or even from that topic from the topic of menstruation with regard to salat and with regard to uh relationships um uh, intimate intimacy with uh with their spouses we allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even goes further into that subject by talking about the rules of divorce and how divorce has to also be regulated based off of the menstrual cycles and so all of these things even and then as an extension of that conversation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the rules of uh, breastfeeding and 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 the rights that women have with regard to breastfeeding uh and the, the right to choose to breastfeed or not breastfeed but also maintaining the right of the child as well with regard to giving them the option to be breastfed even if it's not uh, by the mother um, we also have the regulation on, um, on, on the widow and how she uh, should conduct herself uh, at the death, uh, you know, during the time of the death of her husband. All of these rules and regulations are all combined in the second juz, and it, it, is, it, it, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered the dua of Ibrahim in full totality. Uh, the, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send a messenger. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends him, sends the best messenger to Mecca. Uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sustenance. Not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give sustenance to this bare land, he also gave all the laws that were needed in order for that sustenance to be managed properly. He also protected the lives, he also gave the wisdom uh, to protect the, uh, the lives of the people and also the means of purification for people who want to purify themselves from sin. And all of these wisdoms, all of this knowledge comes through the book that he also asked for. And this, and that book is the Quran. And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, has given us the privilege of being within that community. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, continue to accept uh, our fast. This, this is the month of Ramadan. Um, and even for those of us who might watch after Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept our worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, inspire us with the wisdom that he has given the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inspire us to follow uh, the book that he has given us this guidance in order to purify us and to make us among the elect and the select uh, among the people of paradise. Ameen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.